who's your emergency contact? Who should we notify in the case of death? Welcome to the USP where I spent the last two plus decades of my life. You see behind me right here, this is the tattoo station that my wife occupies, but um, she's been teaching me how to tattoo. So I've been sharing it with her when she doesn't have any, any appointments. Um, if you go to my Facebook or Instagram, you can follow me over there and see my progression. Now, I think I'm getting better, but you know, you can be the judge of that. Anyway, today, I just want to touch on a little bit on the, um, the NF politics. You know, the NF, they run a really strike, uh, strict code of conduct. When you're a, a Northaniel and you hit one of the yards when there's an F, NF member, there's a lot of guidelines and rules and regulations that you have to follow. And for us, you know, we have, when I'm on a yard with some of these Northaniels, and we end up becoming friends or whatever. Like we always clown because like, why would I want to be a Northaniel? I can't even smoke or drink. You know, they had an incident, I think with um, a dude named Manny. I was in Lompoc with Manny back in 2001, all the way to about 2003. Well, <clears throat> when Manny, left Lompoc, I think he ended up in Pollock. And in Pollock, you know, he ended up running up uh, some debt. You know, I think by this time, I'm not sure if they made him an NF yet, but um, the laws and the rules that got passed down was because of this incident. Manny had ended up owing some people some money and the people that he owed money to got tired of his stories, so they crashed. Like, I don't have the details of all everything that went on because I wasn't there. And the only reason that I know about it is because, you know, I run into people that was in Law Pot with us or Victorville with us that knew each other. And every time we come across each other on another yard, we would share stories about, you know, the people that we know and where we was at. And, who we were with, with. So that incident with Manny, again, his car to a wreck over the debt because the guy that he owed a debt to got tired of waiting for him and pretty much disrespected Manny. Like, I don't know the choice words that they use, but, you know, being an NF member or being part of those families and organizations Regardless what led up to the incident, they're not going to allow another race, another car, another gang to be disrespectful to you. So when that happened, they all armed up. They all went to, out to the yard and chopped each other up. So after that incident, you know, the NF members, the leaders of the NF members passed down a decree. No more getting high, no more drinking, no more um, running up bills or any of that stuff, right? So you're pretty much in prison and you have to be a model inmate. So, like, you know, I have a few homies that are NF members and a few homies that are Northaniels. And for me, my relationship with them it's all love and respect. But like I said, when we're hanging out or whatever, we clown around. You know, like, that, homie, I don't want to be <laughs> part of your gang. You can't even do anything on this motherfucker, right? But <clears throat> we had an incident with uh, the homie Spider. He was the NF on uh, in Florence. And he had the yard. Now, when I say their politics is treacherous, you only have a certain amount of people that that sits at the table as far as like the council. And the only way you can get into that spot if one of them retires or pass away. 
And I don't know what all goes in to allow any of these members to retire because when you sign up for these things, it's for life. But I'm sure you're going to reach a certain age where you can't fulfill all your duties anymore and you have to be replaced. So these guys that are NF, their, their objective, their goal, their life's goal, because they signed their whole life to this, is to be part of the upper echelon. You know, because, you, yeah, when you become an NF member, you're now a brother, but there's still different hierarchies within the NF, because the NF is the next level from being a Norteño. So Spider had the yard over there in Florence. The spider was cool. Like he wasn't on, you know, some big homie, bully, strict shit. He liked to party and do whatever he does, right? And he allowed the Norteños that was on the yard to do what they do with the understanding that they take care of their business and that they, that they don't become a problem. Well, while I was there in Florence, they had made this other dude, I don't know his real name, but they call him by the name of Klepto. And he's a white dude that been that was a Norteño that was a Norteño out of Washington. And when he was uh, in Florence, the few months that they let Corny out of the shoe or out of ADX, ADX is the shoe. The shoe is like special housing where you're locked down twenty four seven, right? They had let Corny out of uh ADX and onto the yard in Florence for maybe close to six months. You know, they ended up locking him back up because they were afraid of his authority and the influence that he has. And um, but while he was on the yard during that time, he had gave the green light to put a few different people on and gave him the patch, the NF patch. And Klepto was one of them. Now, you know, during the course of my time that I was in Florence, it's my responsibility, it's my duty, and my job as a representative of, of my little car. We had like, there was nine people when I first got to Florence, but we had an incident where they jumped me in the kitchen because half of them was hot. And um, I was getting kites from the homies when I left Lewisburg about these dudes that was on the yard that was hiding each other out. So these busters knew I was gonna make a move on them and ended up trying to, ended up bringing me the move in the kitchen. But if anybody was there, their account of the situation was that I won, right? I had two dudes try to jump me. I pieced them up, got body slammed by the CO, you know, broke my glasses. I think I suffered a black eye from that incident, but that was about it. So that being said, we had nine people on the yard when I first got there. But at this time, it was always only like four. The most was like six of us walking the yard in Florence USP. But still, I have the obligation and responsibility to the other five, four or five guys around me to make sure that we're always in a position because we're outnumbered 100 to 1 with every group, you know, Mexican group, black groups, white groups, because even though Mexicans, blacks, and whites, they all break down into gangs, into regions, and all that, as a collective, they ride together. You know, all the Mexicans ride together when something happens. No matter what gang you're from, no matter, no matter if you're a Solano, all the whites gonna ride together. Don't matter if you're a skinhead, a Klansman, an independent, or what region you're from. Same thing with the blacks. From DC to the to the West Coast and everybody in between, when it becomes racial, all the groups go to their corner and they all ride together. So us being Asian, even though I'm the only Cambodian, there was a Korean dude, uh Tongan, a Laos, you know, a total of six of us, when it comes on, into a racial riot, that's all we got. You know, if I make a move on one of the blacks or a white or a Mexican, then they're going to retaliate 
towards everybody that's in my core group. And no matter how many times I wanted to count, no matter how many times I take a, a head count, we never exceeded six people on that yard at the same at one time, right? So going back to my responsibility, I have to know who and everyone is and how their structure is run. Because when there's a problem, I'm not just gonna go talk to a TS member or a Texas MA mem member or a Nathaniel member or a Crip or a Blood. I'm not just gonna go talk to any any member. I have to know exactly who I'm speaking to to be able to get somewhere with the conversation, you know? <clears throat> so I know who's in what position, who runs every car all the way down the total pole. And at the time when I got to Florence, Spider had the yard with the NF. And like I said, I had uh, three NFs, uh, or they were Nortenos at the time, but they got made, two of them got made to NF while I was, while I was there in Florence. And I functioned with them pretty tough. So through them, I get to hear all the different politics and this and that. And one day I come out, there's been an issue with one of the Nathaniels. But when I go out to the yard, you know, when there's an issue, you always see the way you can tell who's in charge is who's walking in their lap with the people that has the issue and is debating the problem. And when I go out, I see that it's klepto. And Klepto is pretty young. Klepto was only in his 30s at the time when I was there in Florence, you know, around my age, you know, maybe a little younger even. So I noticed this because usually it's Spider that's in the conversation. But now it's Klepto that's walking the lap with whoever they have the issue with. So when we get back to the unit, you know, I don't just go out like, hey, Dan, what's up with uh, Klepto? He got the yard for you guys or anything like that. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit more finesse with my conversation. And it, but for me, it's not about being nosy. It's about understanding the hierarchy with every car that's on the yard. So for me to do my job, I have to find out those information. And through my, the course of my conversation, I found out that Klepto had the yard over Spider. And Spider's an old head. He's an OG, right? He was like almost 60 years old, still running around with his gravelly voice. Like, I got a lot of love for Spider. He was cool. But what happened was that some of the Nathaniel or even maybe even Klepto himself, and I'm just going to put it out there, and I'll tell you why at the end, why I'm just putting it out there. Now, at this time, Corny and all the other NF members that are part of the council, council, the founders of the organization, they're stuck, they're locked down in ADX. But every car, every organization has a line of communication that are pretty um, proficient. So I guess the guys that are locked down is in charge of the whole federal um, correction set of um, the whole federal system, when it comes to the NF, we're getting kites about Spider allowing the Nortenos and other member and other members sit on the yard and party and get hot. So when they received that kite, they demoted Spider. Now Spider was next in line to have a seat at the council, but because of that violation, they set him back, demoted him and gave him a seven year review, which means in seven years, they'll review him for the possible seat at the count, at, you know, at the core group. Like, you know, you guys think just these people, just, they just run around claiming some type of gang and got a patch on their neck or whatever. Now there's a whole lot of intricate stuff that goes into, you know, their organization because, you know, these are serious business. There's a lot of money involved, and when, it, when a time comes, 
people's got to carry out missions where people lose their lives. So, again, like I said, you might not agree or anything with the way these gentlemen live their life, but it's a serious organization. And, you know, for you to climb that ladder, to be that big dog, to be, uh, you know, in the hot on top of the totem pole, on top of the pyramid, you have to be exceptional. It's not just the level of your violence, but it has to be your intelligence and your ability to deal with situation and carry out certain missions. So before you get that patch on you, the members before you, they have already evaluated through the course of your life and feel that you are of a caliber to be able to be moved up. So anyway, they not uh they kind of demoted Spider. I mean, he still was an influence. He was still considered the big homies amongst, you know, all the homies that was over there. But as far as the running of the yard and the politicking, they gave it to this dude named Klepto, right? And Spider has to wait for seven years to be reviewed to get his status back. So now Klepto, when they put him in a position, he has to control all the money. He's responsible for all the money and everything, right? Well, later on, the story that Klepto was trying to tell, you know, I get all the information, right? But um, so they come back and say, and, and I'm, when, I, when I go out to the yard, I'm seeing that the NF and the Nortenos, they're always politicking, you know, it's, it's, it's heavy. Because, you know, we all live in different units. You got everybody spread out and the yard is split. So the only chance we get to talk to each other is when we come out to the yard and in Florence, you got to talk through the fence. You know, but for me, I've done so much time that my spider senses are always on. So when I walk out to the yard, just by the level of noise, by the movements that's going on, I can tell if everything's okay or if there's tension in the air. You know, when you're accustomed to seeing certain things over and over again, it's easy for you to automatically spot things out, right? So within the next two weeks, I see that there's something brewing with the NF. And, you know, I don't go around asking questions. It's none of my business. But, you know, the relationship that I have with the ones in my unit you know, we get into conversations and sometimes they fill me in on certain things just to let them know what's going on. Just in case, like if there's an issue between them and some other race or some other car that's on the yard, because I function with them, they always give me a heads up. And then it's my decision to decide if I want to aid and assist or not. And with the two, uh, and with the two or three dudes that was in my block, it was understood that if they got into it, I'm an aid and sis every time, you know, because those are my friends. And like I said, if you're not going to willing to do that, don't don't be my friend. You know, don't be, you know, be a, an associate, be somebody that comes and say hi and bye and keep it and keep it pushing. But if I'm breaking bread with you, homie, if I'm eating with you and something pops up and I'm there, I'm not the one that's, I can't be somebody that just sits there and watch and through the course of my bid there's been plenty of occasions where i involve myself because i'm not going to allow my friend just to be a sitting duck right and that's the reason that's part of the reason why i have the reputation that i do when somebody knows that i fuck with them that it's for real and we're gonna have each other's back you know because me Outside of the relationships that I built while I was incarcerated, I'm practically walking by myself. I don't have no homies from out here that are from my hood that's obligated to me. So all the relationship and everything that I built and all the assistance and aid that, that I have, people backing me up or whatever, it's just been on my reputation and how I've carried myself. And I'm grateful to all the homies that ever stepped up.
the blacks, the whites, the Mexicans. I've had every race at one time or another step up and be like, what's up, Mesa? We got you. You know, and to them, you know, much love and respect for all of that. So going back, we find out that Klepto came with the story that his girl on the street that was holding the family's money ran off with it. And it wasn't a little bit of money. It was a lot, right? <clears throat> but the money is not Klepto. The money belongs to the organization. And they want it. You know, so they're letting him know, hey, homie, like, you better uh, figure something out. And to the other point was leading up to this, while the whole other homie's girl was friends with his girl, and she's relaying things to the homie about the shit that this girl is saying. So one of the homies went over there and told him, Klepto, like, hey, man, you better do something. I think your girl is about to pull a move on you, you know, by the way she's talking. And Klepto was, nah, nah, I got that bitch. Nah, that's my bitch. I, she ain't going to do this, do that, or whatever. Well, anyway, she runs off with the money. He's responsible for that money. So now they're pushing up on him like, hey, homie, you got to make this shit right. Right? So a few days later, this dude Klepto disappears. And he ends up checking in. He ends up bowing out of the organization. And you know, when you check in, I don't give a fuck what people tell you. When you go to the police to ask you to protect them, you have to debrief. You have to give the authorities, the guards, the SIS, which is like the eternal affairs of the penitentiary, a reason why you cannot walk that yard anymore. And it has to be to the point where they believe it's credible. Right? And that's why I tried, I always emphasize that, man, if you ain't ready for this life, Don't jump in that water, homie, because it gets serious real fast. And when you get to these upper echelons of organization, there's only one way for you to leave that organization. And that's in a body bag. You know, street gangs is different. Your little high school, junior high crew, it's different. When you go into the penitentiary and for whatever reason you feel that you want to sign up with these different entities, you understand that when you sign up with these entities, you're signing your life to that. But on but it's not just your life that you're signing on to. You're signing everything that comes with you, your mom, your parent, your uh, your wife, your kids. Because when something is serious enough and they can't find you, well, you already know, they're going to find next to kin, right? So the reason I'm able to put this dude's name out there, Klepto, is because he became a buster. They gave him the honor of wearing this patch. And, you know, and you can always, you can tell by the attitude, too. You know, when he was just a Norteño to the time when he would have the patch. When he was a Norteño, he was cool. He was humble, you know, just like a regular guy. But once he got the NF patch on him, you can see the arrogance come out. You, know, you can see his chest puff out a little bit. But for me, those are telltale signs that it's all hot air. Because if you're real about what you, who you are, what you're about, there's no need to switch up just because you got moved up, you know, in the ladder. You just be you because you already know 
when situation comes, what you're capable of and what you're willing to do. So when you run into people that one day you see them, they cool, and next day they're all fucking like they're tough and all that, that's all hot air, homie. Don't even worry about that. You can punch a hole in that bitch and it's going to deflate. And sure enough, I don't even think he had that patch on for, for a year. And he already dropped out. Welcome to the USP.